Hello, folks. Randy Pinocci, Public Service Commission, District 1. Today, we're going to talk about the proposed hydroelectric facility at Gibson Reservoir and how it's going to meet the three goals of the Public Service Commission, safe, reliable, and affordable. The safety concern is met by reducing or stopping the flooding at Gibson altogether, which affects Augusta all the way to Great Falls. Second is reliability. The town of Augusta is facing brownouts and power shortages where if we generate electricity in Augusta, we'll sure up the electricity from that end. And let's talk about affordability. When we bring power in from out of state, we pay 10, 15 times more for it. By generating more baseload energy in Montana, we'll assure lower pricing. But there are other benefits. For instance, the fire department. They have to block the traffic where the water crosses the road. Each flood can cost the fire department a million dollars. And then there's road damage. The federal government usually steps in with funding to repair those highways and roads damaged by the flood. We'll save millions and would have if we would have done this project, say, 60 years ago. Gibson Reservoir was designed for a turbine, but it was never installed. I'm proposing we get that done immediately. There are other benefits. FEMA prevents people from building in the floodplain. And if we're able to back up those floodplain laws, we're going to allow building projects from Augusta to Great Falls, which could be worth a billion dollars in real estate and much needed homes, solving the housing crisis that's in front of us. So folks, I'd like you to take this YouTube video and send it to everyone you know between Augusta and Great Falls. And I'm open for meetings at fire halls, at schools, at a library. Call me 406-231-3649 and we'll discuss getting this project done. So please listen to the hearing and thank you very much. All right, go ahead, Mr. Joel. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I wanted to visit a little bit about uh, the Greenfield Irrigation District's Energy Development Program. Uh, begin a little bit about who GID is, some of the issues facing GID, and how our energy development strategy will help address those issues. Uh, GID is located in Fairfield, Montana, which is 65 miles north of Great Falls. We are, our, our district and infra infrastructure is located in the counties of Teton, Cascade, and Lewis and Clark. Our district boundaries encompass nearly 133,000 acres, of which 83,000 are irrigated. 24,000 acres are dry land pasture, which we manage. GID's membership includes 751 different landowners. We are one of Reclamation's earlier projects. Construction started over 110 years ago when we first delivered water in 1919. We are considered a transferred works program with respect to reclamation, which means we are paid out. We have fully reimbursed the federal government for the original design and construction of our facility. The repayment obligation in 1926 was uh, agreed to at $9.5 million. We did make the final payment in the mid 1990s, so we're out from underneath the feds. The district itself was formed in 1925. So, so in a couple of years, we'll be celebrating our centennial anniversary. We are a local government organized under state statutes and GID is 100% fully responsible for all the OM and R of our infrastructure, which is operation maintenance and replacement costs. One thing we're proud of is GID is considered a public benefit. Uh, several places in state statutes recognizes that irrigation districts organized under 85-7 are a public benefit. One, one simple quick example is we again operate for uh, dams and reservoirs. Those reservoirs are enjoyed by the public for recreational facilities, but the GID producers pay for the maintenance and operation of those structures, not the public and not the state of Montana. Uh, also, the economic impact of over 100,000 acres of ag production is significant both regionally and statewide. Through barley production, our GID producers support two major grain rail car loading facilities the Anheuser-Busch facility in, in Fairfield, and the Molson Coors facility on the eastern edge of our district near Power. Another example of GID's positive influence, GID is the 113th largest town in Montana at 774 residents. 
uh, the town at 114th, 114th in size, has the same population as the town or the unincorporated town of Y, Montana. I had to look up where Y was. I I've heard of Nye, but not Y. Uh, but Y is is on the interstate, and it's the turnoff as you head north to Kalispell, where 93 leaves the interstate. That is Y, aptly named, I should say. Um, y has no school system, but Fairfield, even though it's relatively small, supports a very respectable Class B school system. And that's because our producers, besides growing and raising cattle and crops, they also raise great kids and grow great families. Simply put, irrigated ag supports many family farms, many more family farms than dry land uh, farming does. Some of the issues facing GID, because we're old, our, our, our infrastructure is aging and it's falling apart. It's well beyond its service life and dire need of replacement. Also, the district was conceived and designed to support a gravity-based irrigation system. However, today, 70% of our irrigation is sprinkler irrigation, and that number goes up each year. The cost to replace our failing infrastructure and to modernize district operations will exceed $75 million and take several decades to implement. And this simply cannot be done on the backs of the producers. And I know you're thinking that's all well and good, Mr. Jewell, but what does that have to do with the Public Service Commission? Um, GID's funding strategy includes energy development. Currently, GID is 10% owners of a 14 megawatt facility known as Turnbull facility built in 19, uh, 2011. And it's situated on our infrastructure, our irrigation infrastructure. And it only operates four months of the year. However, our initial investment was uh, quickly recovered. And now the annual dividend basically represents mailbox money for the district. Uh, GID's share of the net revenues each year equates to approximately 8% of the producer's annual assessment. Being nestled along the Rocky Mountain front, GID is blessed topographically with numerous other hydropower opportunities along our infrastructure. When large drop structures must be replaced because of their aging condition, GID intends to incorporate hydropower machinery to capture the energy of this falling water. It is GID's hope that this revenue stream will allow the district to replace its aging structures and modernize district operations before catastrophic failure occurs. And also, of course, this will help keep ranching and farming competitive and cost-effective for us to have cheaper food. Our first project that we are developing is called Arnold Cooley Drop. Arnold Cooley is located on the Pitchkin Supply Canal. Uh, it, is a, it has a three megawatt site capacity and will produce on average 6,500 megawatt hours of energy annually. On March 9th, I submitted a QF1 power purchase agreement with Northwestern Energy for this QF under the rules established by the Public Service Commission as allowed by PURPA. I am currently awaiting GA, um, GA, I'm currently awaiting Northwestern's review and signature of the PPA. And then I listed a whole bunch of bullets there of tasks we've completed to date on the development of the Arnold Cooley hydroelectric project. We're self-certified. I've got a lease of power privilege from reclamation. To date, we have completed 8.4 miles of 69 kV transmission. Uh, another 8.6 miles are currently under construction and the last two and a half miles of 69 kV are, un, uh, are being designed. We have contracted with a turbine supplier manufacturer and we about 70% uh, of, of the costs have been paid for. Environmental and cultural resource documentations, compliance documents have been completed. We've secured financing. We are finalizing a connection, interconnection wheeling agreement with Sun River Electric Co-op. We've obtained permits. We've started construction. Um, and I just want to talk real quickly about the beauty of the energy that GID can uh, you know, our energy development strategy. First of all, GAD is not your traditional energy developer. We are very local Montanans and the revenue stream will help GID producers as well as other Montanans. The majority of the future hydropower sales are off stream and they're actually part of our irrigation infrastructure. So they are relatively and environmentally benign. GID's energy is and will be predictable clean, green, steady, reliable, renewable energy. And just as a comparison, I've, I've taken a couple screenshots and I apologize for the size of the 
of the the images but the top graph shows the energy and this and this data was provided by northwestern energy to the public service commission as part of their annual uh, production reporting requirements the top the top graph shows one month this is july 2019 the turn the production at turnbull this is the one that gid is 10 percent owners of and you can see that the site capacity ranges between 10 and 13 megawatts per hour per day for the month of july uh one one month we did hit our one hour we did hit our 14 uh, megawatt site capacity now on the flip side the lower half shows the wind farm just north of fairfield and you can see the fluctuations in in energy output or the site capacity and they range from zero to 25 megawatts sometimes in the same day so again i just want to reiterate one thing about gid production it's i would consider it almost baseload quality uh we know what we're going to get our biggest variable is you know what day we actually start each year and which day we shut off because that can fluctuate a week or so depending on you know producer conditions you know the uh, field conditions and and whether we're ready to run water or not but once we're running water it's pretty steady state and reliable and then the, the, the other beauty is when we're running water and generating electricity that's the exact same time the producers are putting the water on their field and there's a huge demand for electricity locally so the electrons will most likely never leave the area because we'll be generating using the water. The producers will be using the water and requiring electricity. Um, as you know, this of course frees up transmission grid capacity, reducing the propensity for brownouts and blackouts and so on. I provided some pictures uh, and I know I'm probably running a little long here and I apologize, but um, the pictures to quickly just go through them the top picture on on four just shows the terminus of, of arnold cooley drop the next three pictures show the various phases of transmission line the one on top of page five is the 8.6 miles it's under construction now the next couple pictures just show the actual construction uh taking place at the um, inlet control structure for the power plant and i just want to close in saying that the gid board of commissioners appreciates what the PSC does to support and encourage the QF development, small QFs, especially those that produce reliable, dependable, predictable energy with minimal environmental impact while providing tremendous public benefits. Uh, again, thank you for the opportunity to make the Public Service Commission aware of GID's energy development program. Thank you. Sure, sure. Uh, would you mind standing for a question or two? No, I would. <laughs> or sitting for a question or two? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Pinocchi. Thank you for being here today. Um, I want to remind everybody that this irrigation district serves my farm for the four child irrigation district, which I've irrigated with my dad for 50 years. Um, so I have a lot of experience with what's going on here. A couple of points that I think are important to bring out for information is the Augusta area floods from the Gibson Reservoir and the flooding goes through Sims, Fort Shaw, Sun River and Great Falls. My property gets flooded along with hundreds of others. If we're able to put a turbine at Gibson Reservoir, uh, Mr. Jewell will more than likely stop all that flooding. Is that correct? President Brown, Commissioner Pinocchi, yes, we have developed some preliminary studies that with the addition and, and completion of hydropower at Gibson Dam, there is the opportunity to adjust operational mode of that dam and provide for uh, flood control. Up to some level, we are currently doing the study, but it will represent a tremendous reduction in flood damage and flood occurrence below Gibson. Follow up, Mr. Chairman. Follow up. To give people some ideas of the cost of flooding, the fire department has sent out uh, through those towns, Fort Shaw, Sims, Sun River, on the way to Great Falls, where they have to monitor water crossing the roads, which costs over a million dollars just in fire department fees. Then when the roads are damaged, we get federal money in, sometimes in the millions, to repair those roads. 
So by putting this turbine in would ensure a lower base load energy. The Sun River flows all the time. When we go out of state and buy electricity, sometimes we have to pay 10 times more for it. So I'll save millions in flood damage, which isn't connected to energy. It's connected to your fire department and road construction. The savings of one flood where the floods in the past 50 years would have paid for the installation of this turbine probably 20 times. This is absolutely ridiculous that the public doesn't understand this or we don't talk about these issues. Furthermore, FEMA says we can't build on our land because we're in the floodplain. As an example, they've raised my taxes on my property 122% since 2008, while the federal government tells me I can't build on it. I'm telling you, the people between Augusta and, and Great Falls are ready for a revolution. If you're going to double somebody's taxes and tell them they can't build on their land, this is ridiculous. If this turbine's put in, and we can stop the flooding, we'll be able to back up the FEMA lines, allowing construction on that river between Augusta and Great Falls will open us up to a billion dollars, over a billion in building permits and property. A single home on the river can be worth a million dollars, but we're not even allowed to put in a lawn shed. Okay, talk to the Cascade County commissioners who are promoting putting this dam in uh, and opening that up. The benefits are um, savings in fire department, savings in electricity, bringing base load in, energy that we badly need, right? Also, I've had meetings in Augusta. Uh, Vice Chairman Johnson has sent me out there where I've sat down and we've talked about the brownout problems in Augusta. It's burning up equipment, compressors, uh, refrigeration equipment uh, in the hundreds of thousands of dollars in Augusta. And they're just very, very upset about that. It's true that if we were to be able to put this turbine in, the brownouts would be reduced next to nothing and we'd be charging Augusta from the backside, bringing energy out of Augusta instead of the struggle of bringing it in. Is that correct? President Brown, Commissioner Nochi. Uh, yes, during the months we are generating for four months of the year, during the summer months when electricity demand is quite high, the propensity for brownouts and blackouts would most assuredly decrease because like I say, the electrons will stay in the area and our transmission line, Sun River Electric is actually, you know, the wheeling component. Sun River Electric wheels the power for Northwestern to the town of Augusta. And our line ties into that line. So by default, we would be supplying electricity those four months to the town of Augusta. So I would have to believe, yes, the brownouts would decrease during that time. Gibson, as you know, is represents year round production, albeit less in the winter. It is year round. It is, we have a hundred years worth of flow data on Gibson. So we know what we're gonna be doing on a, you know, any given day almost. Um, and that's about a 25 megawatt ice structure in theory, what it actually gets built at, who knows, but. So yes, uh, as I mentioned in my talk, the brownouts and blackouts have to de decrease because of the, the influx of reliable, predictable energy. Follow up, Mr. Chairman. Briefly, Commissioner Pernocci. Well, I'll spend good time on this because I think it needs it. Um, we've had uh, several tours. Uh, Commissioner O'Donnell's been on one. And um, we can do another tour. We'd like to do it in the spring runoff so people can see the maximum flow at the dam. You're thinking May, June for that? President Brown, Commissioner Pinochi, yes. Uh, last half of May, first half of June is typically the most dramatic runoff event at Gibson Dam. All right, so we'll get that scheduled. Um, after all, we're trying to save millions of dollars here. Thank you, Mr. President. 